Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the vlog. We are in hellos, as I says. We are in Dallas this morning um, for, mm, he's got him a little hotel breakfast over here. Banana, bagel, he's got some cereal. Nana, Nana yeah. Um, well, we stayed in Dallas last night because we have an early appointment this morning, 8.30, before um, starting our transfer cycle. Um, transfer. Yeah, he's trying to tell you that, transfer. Um, so yeah, we're starting IVF cycle number two. The first one resulted, of course, in this perfect boy right here. Two, yeah, baby number two, huh? We're trying to get a baby, aren't we? Mm-hmm, trying to have a baby. His mouth is full. Um, but if you ask him if he wants a brother or a sister, he says he wants a sissy, but you can't really tell because his mouth is full. Um, but yeah, anyway, we stayed in a nice hotel last night. I packed up all my makeup to bring because um, I just wanted, really wanted to wear makeup today and it just makes me feel better. And I forgot all of my makeup at home. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. It was like the one thing I actually took time to pack because everything else I just kind of threw in the bag. It was like, whatever, that'll work. But anyway, no big deal. Um, I have my mask on my wrist because it's actually Saturday today. So if you don't know, IVF clinics um, are open pretty much all the time, especially in the mornings uh, because it, like today's cycle day two for me, which is when you have to go in on a transfer cycle. So no matter what day it is, on cycle day two, you have to go. So um, they do those appointments early, I think because the staff probably doesn't obviously stay all day on the weekends. Um, but anyway, they are there in the mornings. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go and get checked out, make sure we're good to start our uh, transfer cycle. So I'm pretty sure maybe even today I'll start some medication. I don't know when, I believe last time they gave me a prescription. I looked back at my vlogs. I have all of last time documented if you don't know that here on YouTube. Um, and so I look back at the vlogs yesterday, the day before, and it looked like that same day I got my meds, um, my prescription to start estrogen. Um, you start estrogen first to build up your uterine lining. You need me to pull that down for you? Up. Me to help you up, yeah. Um, and then you start progesterone shortly before the transfer, like it was five days before my transfer. You want this? You want this? No? Okay. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah. we're on our way. Hey. Exciting! Hey. <laughs> okay, so went to uh, the appointment and um, I'll kind of show you guys what I'm going to show on TikTok as well. Um, but they just did an ultrasound, uh, which I, I knew they were gonna do like a baseline ultrasound. Mmm, that looks good. Baseline ultrasound and uh, baseline blood work. So pretty much um, they take your blood at the beginning of the IVF cycle, blood. He <laughs> says everything I say. <laughs> everything we say repeats, which is really cute. And he can say a lot of things, but anyway. Um, so they take your, um, blood at the beginning of a cycle just like to see how it changes and stuff and um gave me a prescription so anyway go to the ultrasound they did an ultrasound she said that um she was basically looking at everything they look at your ovaries they look at um everything and a lot of it is kind of just because um during a transfer cycle or at least the way i do transfers there's different kinds of transfers i do medicated cycles um and some people you can do a, a natural transfer where you plan it around your ovulation that's a lot more um specific with timing and everything i feel like it'd be easier to miss and all of that so um that's never even been offered to me i don't know if maybe my clinic doesn't do that i think it depends on the clinic um but i honestly like the way that we do it i feel like it's easier to control um and so anyway we do that so um in in this type of cycle you don't want to ovulate. If you ovulate, you can't do the, um, you have to start over. So anyway, I'll go on medications, which um, will prevent that. I'm, I'm starting to take estrogen today. Uh, they gave me, yeah, it's your milk. They gave me a prescription for, yeah, you can play with that, baby. Um, they gave me a prescription for estrogen. Estrogen uh, going to be called estradiol. I took it last time. I'll start that today. And then I will start, um, my patches in a few days the estrogen patches which is just another form of estrogen just making sure you're getting a good amount of estrogen 
um, it goes through the skin. It's actually really cool. You you change your patches and all of that on a certain day. I mean, it's kind of you have to keep up with it. I always set a reminder on my phone, but they're interesting how they work. I never realized that such a thing existed until we did IVF in 2020. Um, and then yeah, it's okay. You want to eat uh, your bagel? No. No. Um. But oh, this is cool. Here, buddy. You want to play with your thing? I was playing with this Melissa and Doug coloring thing yesterday. So anyway, um, the transfer, uh, if all goes well, which I'm believing that well, last time everything went smoothly. They give you a calendar at your appointment, at your baseline appointment. And so um, my calendar is basically, I'll start Estrace, which is the Estradiol is the off brand that I always am given, which is the same thing. Um, the patch I'll start on January 10th. They'll check the lining a couple a couple times after I start the patch, and then um, I'll start progesterone on progesterone injections, so intramuscular injections on the 20th, uh, seven days before transfer. I think last time it might have been five, but that might just be because of the transfer day. And I don't think it really matters. It just has to be a certain amount for sure. But if it's more than that, I don't think it matters. Um, and then it says COVID testing only if you have symptoms. Um, so last time I had to do a COVID test no matter what. So that's honestly better because last time it was kind of a mess with the whole COVID testing thing <laughs> because it was just real up in the air there for a minute on if we were going to be able to transfer, but we did thankfully. Um, and then the transfer date would be January 26th. Um, so that's wild. I'm like mind blown every time. Last time I thought the same thing. You feel like nothing's ever going to happen. And then it's like all of a sudden, well, there you go. Transfer day is this day. And then after transfer at my clinic, after transfer, if you're, if you have a successful transfer, you only go back, um, for the two blood tests to check your, uh, pregnancy levels, your HCG. Uh, you go once to check to see if you're pregnant and then the other time if you are pregnant to see if it doubled because um, the second number is really even more important than the first the second number is what proves that it is a viable pregnancy uh, most likely obviously things can happen and that's terrible but usually if it doubles that's a, good, a really great sign um, anyway so you go back for that and then you go back for an ultrasound at seven weeks and that's all you do at my clinic you don't go till ten weeks <laughs> you don't go to 10 weeks like some people do he's fine by the way he's just making noises um he's done amazing in the car we've we've obviously it's a drive to dallas so we stayed there last night that's why but um he's done so well especially for a kid that doesn't love the car okay so i am getting ready for bed it's actually at midnight which i really need to do better about that i keep saying that i'm gonna go to bed earlier <laughs> And then I just don't, um, but I need to do better, especially because to be honest, I'm probably about to get extremely tired <laughs> because, uh, IVF meds usually make me tired. So probably, especially once I start progesterone, um, I think I'm about to get pretty tired from that. So I did last time, just like, um, kind of like how people describe like early pregnancy fatigue. Um, but it's like even before you get pregnant, like from the meds and everything, you just get really tired. But, um, I did start my estrogen pills today. So I went to Walmart and I, I was able to get, I guess everything I, I need for now. Um, I'll go on more meds later. It kind of works in like, you know, sections. So I'm doing shorter versions of everything I do here on TikTok, but I'll kind of a deeper explain everything on here. So I did post a TikTok today of our appointment and everything. Um, but it kind of goes in, um, kind of like different segments of medication. So you kind of add to it. You don't really take away until quite a bit later, but you kind of add to. So in the beginning, at least again, my protocol, um, not everybody does the exact same protocol, but I like my protocol because <laughs> it just played a huge role, obviously in getting us, our son. I feel like it was the right protocol for me. It worked well. Um, levels were great, all that. So anyway, um, they prescribed, which we got these from an actual pharmacy, but usually like for our IVF meds, most of them we order from Fertility Pharmacy of America. You order them, um, and they, they like 
are really amazing customer service. I, we've had a great experience with them and they are the most reasonably priced that we could find. Um, for infertility, fertility meds are expensive. Uh, the meds are like one of the most expensive parts. Anybody who's done this will tell you that. Meds are very, very, very pricey. That's how it starts to add up. You think, oh, this isn't too bad. And then you order medication and it is pricey, but they have really, um, they, they make it a lot easier to do. But anyway, these first ones we just got from an actual, um, just our local pharmacy, went to Walmart for it. Um, but it's the estradiol patches, which are these right here. So they're the transdermal patches. These you wear on your stomach. Um, the pharmacy questions me about this every time. They did last time too. I think at some points I did order these from Fertility Pharmacy of America. I'll have to look back. Um, but I know in the beginning I did it at Walmart and they questioned me. The guy was actually really rude back then. I think I talked about it. They questioned me and like put me on the spot and like made me say why I was taking this, which I don't care because obviously I put it everywhere, but some people wouldn't want to just broadcast that probably i don't care thankfully um but he was just rude about it this time the girl did question it as well but she was really nice and i understood her question <laughs> she wasn't rude about it but basically you're taking a lot more um you know like estrogen and things like that than what just somebody maybe low in estrogen you know taking patches or pills would be taking right so uh for ivf your hormone levels are a lot higher you're doing a lot different of a thing than you would be doing if you weren't doing fertility treatment so it just looks different we live in a small area and i would say honestly they don't see it very much so they always question that i even kind of made the joke with manny i should have picked it up in dallas because i just know they see it more nothing against small towns but of course it's less people so you just see probably ivf a little bit less like you would with anything um but it's the patches that you wear on your stomach. Uh, what you do with these, I'll start them on, what is it, the 10th? Yes, I start them on the 10th, so uh, it's officially the 8th now. So in a couple of days, I'll start those. Um, and they're actually, the hardest part about those is to remember to change them. Um, you wear them and switch them every 48 hours. So wear it on one side for two days, then um, put take it off, put one on the other side for two days. Um, and go back and forth, back and forth, and you do it for a while. So you have to remember, I just set reminders, and um, you know, once you get in the swing of that kind of stuff, it's a lot easier, but, um, so yeah, I do that, and then take two estrogen pills a day. What this part of the process is doing is building up my uterine lining. So before you can do a transfer, this is like the most important part before transfer, other than like making sure you don't have polyps and those types of things, which we already did, I already had a surgery for that. Um, but is making sure that you uh, build and grow your lining. So your lining has to be a certain thickness before they will do the transfer. Um, and you also don't want it to be too thick. So with everything with IVF, it's down to an exact science. Um, and there's some leeway. I mean, it doesn't have to be like 8.1, like, you know, whatever. But you just don't want it to be, uh, they typically say, too extremely thick, but also not too thin. It's really crazy, but it's like really... Your bodies are very specific. Um, I say this all the time. You are not a mistake. You you have a purpose because it is not that easy to get here. Um, but anyway, this is for everyone. I think people kind of forget that. Like, it's not just an IVF thing. This happens in natural conception. All these things happen um, in natural conception. And so it's really like, you know, like a lining needs to be a certain thickness. All of these things just for a natural conception as well. These aren't just made up things for IVF, but they're just real life things. Um, but because your cycle and everything is kind of taken over during IVF, they have to kind of stimulate you through medications instead of your natural uh, cycle taking place. And so anyway, we'll start progesterone shots as well. Um, I will record those like I always do, but I'll do some TikToks of those as well. I think that'll be fun. Um, I like to share those types of things because progesterone shots scare people really badly, rightfully so. They are, they look really crazy. Um, I did them for 10 weeks with the last pregnancy and uh, I feel like I've got some, I feel like I've got it down this time around. You know, you feel a little bit more confident your second time around, you really do. It feels like, okay, I, I know what I'm doing. I know what these things are. You know, Manny knows how to do this um, and she was explaining it to me today. Like, you know, this is what you'll do and this is what you'll take and kind of explaining what it was and what it did. I was like, yep, you know, I did this last time. I, um, I just feel more confident, you know, whereas last time it was like, wow this is extremely overwhelming like when we got all of our medication last time i was like what am i supposed to do like this is crazy how am i going to remember this 
um, but you do. You, God gives you grace for the season that you're in and you remember things that you didn't think you could remember and you look back a couple years later and your baby's asleep in bed and everything worked out and it all works out and comes together but in the moment it's like so overwhelming. So this time is scary, I'm not gonna lie. It's still stressful but uh, it's not as overwhelming as far as the logistics go because I've done it before. But it has been hard the past few days. My cycle was about a week late, which it never is. I thought I was pregnant. I'm obviously not. Um, but it was honestly, that sounds crazy because obviously I'm trying to get pregnant, but I knew that I wasn't pregnant. I even took some tests. I knew that I wasn't pregnant, but I was like so stressed out about it because I'm like, I don't know when it's going to start. You have to go to the clinic on cycle day two. It's a two and a half hour drive. So I kind of have to you know, figure it out ahead of time. I felt like I wasn't going to have time. And what if something's wrong? You know, what if, what if that's why I'm not having this cycle? Like I always would. My body's always been like clockwork, like outrageously on track. It's actually kind of weird how on track it's always been. Never had that. And so I'm just like freaking out about it for days. I was thinking, what is something wrong with me? And now <laughs> the whole transfer is gonna be delayed. I truly thought we're out this cycle because I'm just, it's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna have to wait till February. The longer I wait, what if I get more polyps? I mean, I just feel like the enemy was really using that for me was like to scare me because I am a little bit more confident. Let's just throw something in there to just really scare her, you know? And I'm not one to blame the enemy for absolutely everything, but I do think that he plants things that might seem like minor things and are most of the time but uh we can explode those things and give him more you know of a platform than he ever deserves and so i'm not going to do that you know i'm not going to give the enemy a platform in this in this whole season of my life and uh you know i said that last time it, the god spoke that to us when we first did, started our ivf journey the enemy satan cannot win he cannot win he will not win. <laughs> no matter how this goes, no matter how this ends, no matter what this looks like, he will not win. He does not get to. He doesn't get my mind. He doesn't get my peace. He doesn't get my family. He doesn't get my children. He doesn't get my marriage. He doesn't win. He never wins. He is just a loser. And so I just remind myself of that every day. Um, I have to grab Zion real quick, I think. Yep, I'll be right back. Okay, he was squirming around. I held him for a minute, but... Um, so anyway, yeah, I don't remember where I, where I left off, but basically I'm just going into this cycle with um, peace that I'm choosing because you don't always just have that naturally, right? Like we go through things that are difficult and that are, um, and there's really honestly like, I don't know, I feel like you can find the good in anything if you want to, and there's so much good in IVF. I talk about that all the time. I mean, it's imagine if it didn't exist, right? So I really try to not look at negative parts of it because obviously there are some, right? Clearly, if you've ever done it, it's a hard process, but um, it's incredible. You get to see things firsthand that other people don't get to see. I mean, I feel like I'm a scientist at this point, even though I definitely don't know nearly as much as they do, but you just get to like experience things that are, are truly, to me anyway, just so interesting and fun and special. And so, I'm looking forward to that, um, you know, and you just try to like glamorize the things that the season that you're in, right? Like I'm going to enjoy these appointments. I'm going to enjoy um, this transfer day. Uh, I am, however, really crampy tonight, which that's happened before, um, you know, when you get these ultrasounds, especially like right now at cycle day two. So already was a little bit crampy anyway, but when you get the internal ultrasounds, um, the vaginal ultrasound, you can sometimes, it can like kind of trigger some crampiness, um, usually just for that day. It's not like anything severe, but it's just a little bit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take my medication. I used to always try to take it on camera, partially to share it, but also so that if I forget if I took it, I can look back and see that I took it. It's actually a pretty good uh, hack there because I don't know if you're like me. As soon as I get off camera, I'm like, it, or as soon as I take it, like five, even if I'm not on camera, five minutes later, I'm like, did I even take that? and then I'm like scared because I don't want to take another one you know it's a whole thing I don't know maybe you have a better memory than me but that happens to me a lot so I'm gonna take it real quick and then I'm gonna end the vlog really tiny a lot of you have probably never seen what these look like but I can't really show it because it's literally so small but it's just that little tiny blue pill 
all right well, thank you guys for joining me i'll see you guys in the next vlog remember you're incredible jesus loves you go follow over on tiktok because we're doing lots of stuff there see you later